Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm more than happy to take as many questions as you want, but I fully suspect you're equally bored of listening to me. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. We don't know. Although we're calling this Avro Green, we don't know if this was built at Longbridge near Birmingham. We don't know if, if some of the other factories had a different colour. We don't know how standardised this colour was across Avro. Well, yeah, we've got, I think it's two other Lancasters with this colour inside that we've seen, but they might all have been built at Longbridge, for all I know. We need to go back and check. Yeah. Um, effectively, yeah. So we did a paint strip in 2016 to have a survey on the exterior skins of the aircraft to see really what state of work we were looking at. Uh, she was then repainted that, that spring period, but when we split the aircraft at the transportation joint, just put behind the H or the D, um, because we, we drill out all the rivets, we then paint strip the skin, check the skin, reuse it if we can, um, or replace it if we can't. So in, in reality, it's gonna go for another complete paint strip before she, she's airworthy. Yep. The dissimilar corrosion, yeah. Obviously, it was something Avro uh, lifespan of the aircraft. They weren't particularly concerned about. Yeah. There's now you say there's modern practices in, in construction for dealing with with um, dissimilar metal corrosion. Is that something now you have to do? And if so, do you have to write a mod because it wasn't done yeah. originally on the aircraft? Okay. So the best practices of using a jointing compound. It isn't something which the CAA would insist on happening because it isn't something that dictates the airworthiness of the aircraft at the time when it's finished. It's something you put in place because when you have your servicing schedules year after year, you want as little work to happen in those, those periods after the work's been done. So it's, it's best practices for longevity of the aircraft, really. Um, you just wouldn't do it now, you wouldn't. I mean, even aluminium to aluminium we put a jointing compound because it stops moisture getting trapped in between and, and corroding the two materials. So it's just, it's something, I mean, they probably had the working practice back in 1930s, 1940s, but because of the speed they had to get them out, if, if you can not put this jointing compound in, you might save yourself three days work when you add it all up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's not a, an official mod or anything like that, it's just best working practice. So, so we, we, we could not do it, yeah. um, but it wouldn't be in our best interest not to not do it. When you talk about the way you had to be made these, was that when they were being made during the war? That would most likely have been stamped out in the press. So there'd have been a, a former on a, probably a, a hydraulic press that has been stamping out every few seconds, a new skin goes in, stamped out, and they'd have had formers for all the different shaped skins. Yeah, so we've had to do the long yes. approach. We, we could have probably spent a million pounds on it stamped out. What do you do with all the parts that you're sort of saying that are serviceable, but they would be serviceable in their company of the factory? Yeah. Do you not source the parts that are serviceable and almost build another language for any good casting? I'm hoping it won't come to that. <laughs> Um, so the question is, what are we doing with all the parts we're taking off that are, are deemed unserviceable? At the, mo at the moment, we're just keeping them. Um, I would like to think that they will come in useful in their current form. For example, we have a, rear, a small rear section of a Lancaster over there that was one of the first Lancasters off the production line that started as a Manchester, but eventually came off the line as a Lancaster. So, for example, this former is a former that isn't in that section. So we can reuse that former in that section to rebuild that. Um, we've had various companies want to take the material and melt it down to make cufflinks. Um, we've had people say they would rather, if you are going to sell the original material, they'd rather buy it in its original form with a, a note saying what it is. Um, we've got some old Perspex, which was the original Perspex fitted to the Lancaster. It's not usable for anything because it's all crazed and cracked and, and beyond its usable time. So the question is, do we melt that down and make um, like key, key rings or sweetheart brooches out of it? 
how long do you hold on to an item in a box never to be used again? There's, you want to keep the history of the aircraft, but equally there is only so much of this item which will ever be usable in any form, displayable in any form. Um, we've been approached by a company that are trying to make a, a static Lancaster for an American customer and they've asked to buy anything that we take off that's no longer usable for Airworthy. So there's that possible route. Um, the simple answer is we don't know yet what we're going to do with it. Um, I'm hoping that the more we progress more internally to the aircraft, the better condition things are going to be in because they've had less environment on them, shall we say. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I may be rolling out another static Lancaster after this. <laughs> 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 I don't know, a question about your relationship with you. Yeah, so there's was it two or three Lancasters out in Canada that are being restored at the moment. Um, they work to transport Canada rules and regulations. Uh, there's one that's restoring it to Airworthy without the paperwork. So they're never going to fly it, supposedly, but it's going to be in a ground money condition like this one. Um, so we, we do converse with them quite regularly about what they're doing. Um, because they're not making it to fully airworthy, there's certain things that they don't have to do. So if they have a, something that was originally an extrusion, but because extrusions are so expensive, if they can make it in another way that comes with the same result but doesn't have to be extrusion, they can do that, which means that they wouldn't necessarily want to go on board with an extrusion with us because it's more expensive for them to do that rather than making it in a different way. Um, but we, we have very good relations with the guys at Windsor, the guys at Nanton, Canadian Warplane Heritage at Hamilton. Um, one of their engineers comes over and helps us in his holiday. So talk about a busman's holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it would be foolish not to have an extremely good working relationship with, with everybody who's doing Lancaster work. Because not only can you share parts, you share experience as well. So because we're going so deeply into a lot of this, we're finding things, finding flaws in production, which we can then pass on to other people, which they then may find a fault in their aircraft and never thought about looking for, um, and things like that. You know what I mean? It had a boom replaced, yeah. We're working with the expectation that we're going to have to replace spars. Not because of the life on them. So, a Lancaster, everyone, everyone says the main spar of a Lancaster, you, you, you visualise some big eye beam that goes from wingtip to wingtip. It's very different to that. There's, there's four booms, we'll call them, in, so there's the centre section, which goes effectively inboard engine to inboard engine, has four booms. One at the top at the back, one at the top at the front, one at the bottom at the back, one at the bottom at the front with a web in between, a bit like that. And then the wings themselves have the same and they all bolt together. As I said before, when the aircraft flies, it stretches the bottom boom, compresses the top. So there's more fatigue on the bottom boom and it, it appears that there's the most fatigue on the bottom boom of the rear spar. So that, um, what was the original question? <laughs> have we got to do it? Yeah. So. Yeah, so you can't get the original material anymore. Um, that's pretty much a standard saying for me now. Um, so our aircraft has flown 2,424 flying hours. The lowest life boom of the main spar is 4,000 flying hours. So officially there's another 1,600 flying hours on the bottom boom of the rear spar. But what we've found going around the aircraft that we have, we're not having to replace things like the the fin spars are life to a certain number, of about 10,000 flying hours, something like that. We've got two to replace, not because they've got up to that flying hours, but because of corrosion that we found when we've been in there. So we're expecting on the wings that we are going to find corrosion and probably intergranular corrosion, which is the worst type of corrosion because you can't stop it. Um, we're expecting that we will find that purely because of what we found elsewhere. So when we come to do sense section and wings, we're expecting we're going to have spars to replace because of the nature of where the aircraft's flown, how it's been stored, and the lack of protection that Avro's put into it when they built it. I mean, 